A little locust right here. That's a little food for some of the box turtles. Right there. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everybody? Kenan here. It's Ask Camp Kenan Day. But you, you may notice I'm in a different set of surroundings. I'm with Chris Leone from Garden State Turtle and Tortoise. I'm actually on a little family vacay. And um, Tom was like, Kenan, you gotta get to work. Uh, you gotta get me an Ask Camp Kenan for this week. So I'm doing it while I'm out and about. I was in New Jersey, so I called Chris. Chris is gonna be a part of this one because it's less an Ask Camp Cannon really than it is just something that's been on my mind for a while. Uh, so many of you guys have been asking, what do I think about this trend of pet tubers? Uh, what do I think about pet tubers just buying animals for content for their videos? Um, I, I really wanted to invite uh, Chris in on this because he really has a very similar mindset uh, that I have yeah. uh, in that we try and keep our animals um, kind of healthy and as natural as possible. Um, and you, similar to me, uh, to my knowledge, you don't buy many animals, do you? No. you you've, what's your mantra here? Like, what do you, what's your whole thing? Let's walk and talk. First of all, you know, there's so many different sides that come into play with animals in general, whether they're in the wild or in captivity. And there's one common denominator, and that's that we love these animals. But when it comes to captive settings, whether it's a private facility, whether it's a zoo or a conservancy or any kind of organization, the animals never asked to be in that situation. So even though it's a positive thing for both animal and person involved, possibly, there's something that should come into play, and that's using nature as a model. Right. Okay? trying to make the animals feel as comfortable or, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, at home as possible. Okay, here's a, one of your margin. What? No, this is this one of is your- This uh, desert tortoise. Oh my gosh, get out of here. Yeah. Now this is, this is really cool because this is what we're talking about. Now this is a species that was, uh, I believe it was a rescue. It was a rescue. Okay, yeah. so this is an animal that should not be no. out of its native range, yet you're permitted uh, from the state of New Jersey, much like I am in Florida to handle some of these yeah. exotics. Uh, what was this animal's story, man? This animal was taken out of the wild at the time that we received it, which I, I'd have to double check, but I think it's been about five years since we've had her. She was taken out of the wild 17 years prior to that. Uh, and then she was, um, I don't know what the series of events occurred towards the end of that, but she ended up with the Mid-Atlantic Turtle and Tortoise Society and they needed to adopt her and another one out. Uh, so uh, we were contacted and we, just, we decided to take them, but you know, this is a challenging species being so far out of their native range. You right. know, we're all the way over in New Jersey where we've got the four seasons, where we've got high humidity, and uh, you know, this girl comes from a desert, you know. So, it, you know, we wanted to create something that could be both spacious, inviting, and somewhat like what she would be subjected to in the wild. So we went for, you know, the sandy, open, desert-like right. setting, you know, in New Jersey. <laughs> right, you see now, I know that this is an Ask Camp Kenan, but you're getting a little bit more than an Ask Camp Kenan. You're getting um, another expert's opinions. And to get to the question, that that's actually a good, case in point like what do I think about these people uh, I don't know if you're aware you're not much on YouTube but there's a trend and there are some really big channels where people are considered pet tubers and a lot of them all they do is purchase animals mm -hmm. for content for their videos mm -hmm. so um, sometimes and it's very apparent that you'll see people get animals fish birds lizards turtles snakes they don't really do their homework they don't know what the animals requirements are uh, in some cases, they're even misnaming animals. There are some popular YouTubers who who thought they had a certain species uh, of lizard or monitor, and, and it's it turns totally it's different. something totally different because obviously they didn't do you know their research. So what do I think of that? I'm I'm against it. I, I just it's just not what I would want to base my channel on yeah. because you know Chris and I are passionate about you know conservation about education we're not against having these animals as pets by the way I in no way want to kind of give that uh, opinion I, I'm not against pets I, I'm just against using them as kind of props now it's kind of a tricky situation because obviously slinky is a big draw on my channel and we do do the really fun youtube videos where we put gopros on them and gopros on the turtles mm -hmm. i try and do that as a way to educate and get a really unique perspective of these animals it doesn't hurt them they're able to move freely the animals are kept in naturalistic environments uh every once in a while they get to swim in the recreation pond with me right. so 
as far as just buying animals though, just for content, I think it's a dangerous practice because you, as your channel grows and you make a lot of money, you just keep buying these animals. Some of them unfortunately die. Mm -hmm. um, they're not being cared for. And you and I both know, how many animals do you, would you estimate you have here? There's probably a good 300 animals, yeah. maybe more. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm hovering somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 at my place, and it is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Even doing these videos, guys, like it takes a, an incredible amount of resources You know, when I do these videos. Look at this, case in point, while we're walking and talking, you're getting a bonus, folks. Here's a little endangered species right here. This is a North American species found here in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and parts of the uh, eastern part of the United States. This is spotted turtle and you do a lot of work with these guys. Um, so you've chosen animals, really, North American species here of pond turtle uh, that are kind of threatened. Yeah, we've got a lot of endangered or threatened or species of special concern here. We do work with both the state, you know, and, and for just personal use. But I think what was just so important about what you're saying there, like comparing things, what you're doing is educational. You're educating people. You're teaching them something about an animal. You're not just buying an animal, opening it, and you know, opening the box for ooh ah factor. You right. Know? And that and that's in today's day and age that that's boundlessly important. You know, because we need people. We need the upcoming generations. You know, my daughters especially. You know, in in my case, you know, they got to learn about these animals. They have to know their place in our world before anything else. You know, and to just to just get a box to. Just, to you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's, uh, it's shallow. It's, it's not, listen, I'm, we're going to date ourselves. You know, I'm an older guy. It's just not something that excites me. I've never been excited about material things mm -hmm. um, unless those material things are the habitat for these animals. Uh, I just saw something rustling, a little locust right here. That's a little food for some of the box turtles that might be... Uh, right there. Look at this. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. I mean, uh, do I let nature take its course or I don't know if anyone will get mad any entomologist there, but there's... There you go. <laughs> we got... Uh, I just helped out a Gulf Coast box turtle get a little nibble uh, so that's kind of neat. See, but that's the kind of fun stuff, uh, you know, that I enjoy and why we enjoy yeah. these animals. Is that, life. Well, it's, a, you were talking about a naturalistic enclosure. Yeah. It doesn't get more naturalistic than what we just witnessed. I know I helped a little bit, but <laughs> somebody would have found that locust yeah. and, uh, it's pretty cool. So that's what really gets us excited. I mean, look at this, look at this pond. There's Blanding's turtles, wood turtles, some red belly turtles in here. There's a painted turtle right there I can't really zoom in on. Um, it's just a beautiful habitat. So what we tend to do is spend our money on the environment. Um, so I'm not saying you guys shouldn't get animals. It, it, the contrary, I think captivity can be uh, a helpful tool if done correctly for some of these animals we keep because we know the wild is shrinking uh, day by day. Captivity may end up being the, the only true future for a lot of these animals. If the world is going to keep shrinking, the environment's going to go down and, and you know, the, all the stuff that we already know is happening to our world. But it's got to be done responsibly, you know what I mean? Anybody can just open up a box and throw an animal in another box and show it off to their friends. But we're not talking about a classic car here. We're not talking about a new dress or a watch or a bracelet. You know, you're talking about something with a heartbeat, a living, breathing animal that needs your help. It's not there to help you. Right. And that was some of the things we, we were talking prior to this video, and I've said it on my channel before. We are actually um, stewards to these animals. In many cases, I don't believe I own my animals. I believe that I am a steward. I am someone that's here to, to kind of help uh, those animals thrive the best way possible. Look, here's a... Yeah, I am being very careful. Here's a... Uh, that's not a good spot. <laughs> oh, really? I'm getting off. I'm not being careful. I lied. I'm very sorry. I just was got very excited about this uh, Blanding's turtle right here. So this is another North American species that is under extreme pressure in the wild. Um, but, you know, here at Garden State Turtle and Tortoise, uh, this animal's thriving and doing well. And most of the animals that you see in this video are animals that are rescued, um, which is similar to my home. He works just like I do with different uh, conservation organizations, state and, uh, and federal government agencies and zoological institutions to provide habitat or holding facility for some of these animals. And this is a beautiful, beautiful species. Just a real quick side note about this species found in the upper parts of the Midwest, 
parts of, um, I believe, extreme western New York, extreme mm -hmm. western Pennsylvania. This is an animal Great you've... Lakes. Great Lakes region. But you've seen these animals doing something really unique here in uh, your backyard in the winter. And what would that be? They breed under the ice. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> People don't normally associate a reptile with anything other than heat. But in some cases, with species like the Blanding's turtle, it's actually the opposite. He's not a big fan of today. You know, yeah. today is upwards of 100 degrees here. And, uh, you know, hailing from the Great Lakes region, or typically just anywhere further north of here, much, much further north, they, um, their, their prime season is the spring and fall, and then even in the winter under the ice, the males will go after the females and successfully breed with them. That is really, really cool. So you see, we're, we're killing a few birds with one stone, one video. A few birds, one video. We're learning and uh, you're getting our opinions. So getting back to the topic here at hand, um, you know, I know, um, I know that, uh, you know, there are some pet tubers I really like and I'm friends with and many of them are moving away from that model uh, because they realize, you know what, like we love animals, we don't want to hurt them. And I'm not saying those folks don't love their animals. What I'm saying is, it is easy to get in trouble. Once you start making a few bucks, it's kind of easy. You get carried away, you start buying more, you want more attention, you want more, uh, more animals. But um, what I learned when I started really um, building out Camp Kennan, when I was working in sports TV years and years ago, I had uh, the ability to purchase animals. And I found out really, really quickly that more isn't always better. Um, and these days I keep things manageable. Uh, it's more about the habitat. You said something earlier about this. You actually blew this. Look at the size. By the way, look at, I'm, I'm going to spin around, okay? This is all one giant enclosure that these animals have. It goes back in here by these pine trees. It comes back. There is a bog. It is massive. And the reason that you did that, Chris, is... To make them at home. That's it? Yeah, it was <laughs> no, kind they, of a rhetorical they, question. No, they, they you know... It, it, any animal in captivity is going to have boundaries, you know, and, and that's safe for them too. You don't want them to get out. You right. don't want them to have too, too much room where you can't keep an eye on them because as your, you know, as your care, as their caretaker, you know, you, you need to look after them, make sure that they're healthy, make sure right. that they're getting everything that they need. But the benefit of going this big too, you're also enabling the animals to find some of their own food like that locust, you know, or, um, exhibit more of those natural behaviors that they instinctively were born with you know and that's what i wanted to do and i made a joke before saying the next time he comes back this enclosure might be up to the road you know? <laughs> that's crazy because i'm never happy with that but that's what i put everything into is just trying to make them feel at home as possible all right know? well there you have it i hope we answered your questions uh this one was one that we didn't take from our patreon we took it from our youtube channel where a lot of people i kept seeing it over and over again and it was very near and dear to my heart because i love the animals so much and i know so many of you that watch this channel love the animals as well now you know my feelings you've met uh you've met chris uh in prior videos you know his feelings you've seen the hard work and dedication he has for his animals and that's what we're trying to do at camp ken and i want to get as many of you you excited about building cool habitats learning about the animals that's another quick I'm gonna make a quick statement about YouTube so many young people uh, when I meet you guys you come up to me and say I want to be a youtuber too I want to do YouTube that's fantastic but the most important thing is about building a it's a pyramid right the knowledge has to be the base of the pyramid the YouTube has to be the top because it's basically um, how we are able to convey why our, you know, why people listen to us is because I, I hope they feel they get uh, value out of what we're saying and they can tell that we've done years of learning and reading. Um, so guys, if you want to be the best you can be, read first, learn, do, and then share what you know, okay? Build that base, build that foundation of your pyramid of knowledge, okay? That's it. That's it. That's all I got to say. I don't want to prattle. Education is everything. On. Education is everything. Thank you guys so much. If you want to get more questions answered, uh, go to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan. Head on over to garden underscore state underscore tortoise on Instagram and uh, click uh, follow because you'll see a lot of interesting content coming out of Chris's uh, Instagram there. And that's it. Like and subscribe. I hope this video was beneficial to some of you, and I hope it makes sense. And I hope I was succinct in my answer. I prattle on. I'm leaving now, but we're going <laughs> to leave you with a view, as always, of a really cool North American species. How about a red-bellied turtle? Would you like that? 
See you guys.